Welcome to Hypnosis Today, the nation's first web TV talk show that explores the fascinating world of hypnotherapy. My name is Lisa Mackenberg, and I'll be your host covering a wide variety of subjects to help you understand the power of the subconscious mind and how hypnosis is being used today to help people achieve success, happiness, and prosperity. It is my pleasure to introduce my very special guests. Well, my first one is Ted Moreno. Now, Ted is an honors graduate of HMI College of Hypnotherapy, and he is also an author. Now, I want to make sure I get this right. His book is one of my favorite books. He wrote, The Ultimate Guide to Letting Go of Negativity and Fear and Loving Life. And Ted has with him his very special guest and client, Rob. Now, Rob came to see Ted to achieve more success in business. Please help me welcome my guest. Now, Rob, I want to start with you. What was going on that you uh, wanted to get some help with? Well, after a lot of years of working for other people, I started my own business. And I, have never, I had never run a business before. Um, I wasn't really raised to run a business. I, I knew how to work for others and make you know, a, a success of that. So there were just a lot of, of unexpected challenges that I had that Ted helped me through, uh, not the least of which is the ability to focus on um, the structure of a business. Well, it sounds to me like you needed a business manager. Why would you want to go see a hypnotist, of all things? Well, the problem wasn't necessarily the, the management of the business as much as maybe the management of myself and, and uh, my own fears, uh, and that was a big, big issue. Oh, I get it. How did you find Ted? Uh, Ted and I are members of a uh, networking group uh, mm -hmm. that meet, we meet weekly, and um, it was a no-brainer for me. You know, Ted, just from talking uh, to Rob over here, I can tell he's an intellectual analytical, am I right? That is correct. What kind of an induction would you use for an analytical intellectual like your client Rob here? I would use an auto-dual induction, or as my mentor used to call it, auto dual. <laughs> and um, so I would use an auto dual induction, which I find very effective, and I, I pretty much use that with every client. Boy, I'll tell you, it's been a long time since I learned auto dual, and I want to ask who here remembers it in our studio audience? Who doesn't remember it? Can you teach us? Absolutely. So you begin by taking the client and have him put his right index finger on his left pulse and stare at the fingernail. And then you have them repeat out loud some words. You have them repeat, I will now enter the state of hypnosis for reasons of deep relaxation and self-control. I will count from five down to zero, and with each count, I will become more deeply relaxed. When I reach zero, I will go deep asleep. And then you have them continue to repeat, five, I feel my breathing growing deep, gentle, and rhythmic. Four, my arms, my legs, my entire body are now deeply relaxed. Three, my eyes are getting heavier and heavier. I'm drowsier and sleepier. Uh, two, my eyes are getting heavier and heavier, my, I'm more deeply relaxed, one and zero deep asleep. I think you just put Rob and I in because <laughs> we're both super suggestible to eyes the sound of your eyes. All right. How did this work for you, Rob? It actually worked amazingly well. Um, as probably most people, when you f have your first experience, you're you know, hoping you're not going to get up and start quacking like a duck. And um, I found that the, the change happened probably a number of days afterwards. I just felt it, um, whether it was confidence, whatever. I've had a number of sessions, uh -huh. whatever the focus was on that session. I can almost feel after about a week and reflecting back on that week, a palpable change. I can tell you why. When you're an intellectual analytical, oh my gosh. <laughs> The conscious mind evaluates each and every hypnotic suggestion, decides whether it's intellectually suitable, mm. and then we allow it to filter down, going deep down into the subconscious mind. And we see the manifestation of the hypnosis the next day, the next day, or even the day after. Right. What were the feelings like when the hypnosis finally kicked in? I found a greater ability to actually shut my mind down. The, the, uh, that, that had always been that issue between me and my goal in, in many situations where just overthinking things and, and thinking about all the things that could make me uh, more negative. Yeah. So uh, being able to drop that, being able to have that self-voice and talk to myself about, um, you know, let that go. 
and, and literally change my mind. Change your mind, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like there was a lot of fear. Can mm -hmm. you talk about what the fear was? Was that what was holding Rob back? That was a large part of what was holding Rob back. You know, the fear of starting a business and failing is certainly uh, there with every person that starts a business, or uh, at least it was with me. Mm -hmm. um, and not only that, but the whole thing can seem kind of overwhelming. You know, like, what do I do? Where do I start? Um, so, you know, kind of chunking it down and taking it step by step. This is what I need to do today. This is what I need to do tomorrow. Kind of gets us out of the paralysis that fear can create and keep us from moving forward or sometimes even doing anything. Did you find that procrastination was linked to fear or linked from just feeling overwhelmed? Yeah. What did yes, that feel like absolutely. for you? Um, it, the, I mean, that, that, that's something I know I'm not alone in that had been plagued plaguing me for most of my life, and, and the procrastination meaning I can put off the ultimate end, which of course I was afraid of because I, I wasn't seeing that as a, you know, I, I saw a positive was a possible end point, but more than not, I would lean towards the negative, the fear of, but what if. Talk to me about the first time you actually discovered that you were taking the action steps that you needed to do and not putting them off. Mm. I don't want to do it, but then you said, I choose to do it anyway. You know, I, I don't remember literally the first time that that happened, but I noticed a pattern where I was, I was finished. I, I completed either a task or a day or, or a project and realized that I had gotten through it in a normal amount of time that one would expect. And and um, and I followed the pattern that I set, the ch the the, the um, schedule that I set, and uh -huh. wound up more than not in a positive. You know, it's not not always positive, but that was okay. It was all right. It was just you know part of the statistic. The greater one was I succeeded more than I failed. You succeeded more than you failed. Right. That's huge. Did you have Rob doing any homework so he mm -hmm. could take those action steps? to get the work done and succeed more than he failed? Yeah, I gave Rob a lot of homework. <laughs> <laughs> I had him writing affirmations. I had him listening to recordings of the hypnosis part of the session. Um, I think we talked about mental bank. So, um, you know, and I kept giving him more and more tools to use uh, when he was not uh, in session. Um, and affirmations, I think, you know, we started with affirmations, kind of re, kind of re, programming the language to start swinging from negative to positive and having him write the affirmations before he went to bed and just creating that feeling and belief of that success is possible and probable. Do you remember any of the affirmations? Sure. Tell us. Well, I can't tell you all of them, but they... You can I won't tell <laughs> it anybody. It was basically that I, um, I, I don't remember the literal ones and I haven't done them for a while. It's, it, as Ted said, he gave me a lot of tools and when I used those tools, I noticed a difference. And when I forgot, I noticed a difference. Um, but it, it, was, it was stating a fact of something that had as if it already existed, when at this point it was, I want that to exist. But I changed that language to, it exists now. I am successful. I mm. do speak with people with, with confidence and authority. I, you know, I, um, all of those as if they exist now and slowly, actually not so slowly, they became reality. Can you teach us three affirmations or post-hypnotic suggestions? You want every hypnotherapist uh, to know and have in, or in his or her tool belt to be able to help a client create business success, break through procrastination. Okay, so a great affirmation that I say to myself all the time is I'm so happy and grateful that money comes to me now in increasing amounts from multiple sources on a continuous basis. So this creates the expectation that money can come to you anytime, and then it does. Even if it's a penny on the street, you need to pick it up and say thank you, okay? So I think another important affirmation to have is um, I expect success and I welcome success. Um, the other uh, affirmation that I think is very important, especially for business people, is I, uh, my, I'm open for business and I want more and more business. I'm open for business and I want more and more business. Because I think when hypnotherapists first start out, at least this was my experience, you know, I'd be sitting at the first 
two appointments going, I hope they don't show up. You know, because I'd be, you Does know, that I wasn't. Does that sound familiar to anyone? <laughs> Did that sound familiar to you a little oh, bit sure, when you were sure. open it for It still business? creeps in, just thinking about if somebody had to cancel or postpone, there was almost a little sense of relief. So tell me a little bit about what happens now when you have some of those fears, when you have some of those doubts. What tools that Ted taught you do you use in a full waking state to improve your business, to stay positive, and to draw those money, all that money in from unexpected sources? Well, um, a couple of those, those affirmations are, uh, as I remember, they were the ones that, that I used, or variations of that. Um, just, uh, again, being, finding more things to be grateful for. And those are the things that when I'm focused on and when I, I'm conscious of, um, I can catch the moments that I start to feel good about somebody canceling and realizing, well, wait a minute, I now want to fill that time. You know, that's not a good thing. So um, as long as I can stay focused on that, and the more I practice with the tools that Ted's given me, the more successful I am at being able to do that. Well, what would you say to other intellectual analyticals who might be skeptical, skeptical about hypnosis? What would you say to them? Oh, just to shut, your, shut your, your mind down, shut your brain down for a while, and, um, and feel the information that, that you're listening to, and if it, it, if it makes sense. And um, being, being analytical is not always a good thing, especially with something like this. You know what? I agree, and that's the best endorsement I've ever heard. Being analytical is great. Being intellectual mm -hmm. is stellar. But sometimes you've got to take that leap of faith. Yep. And you can use someone like Ted to help you. You know, Ted, everyone's going to want to know more about your book and want to know more about your practice and learn how to both teach and to practice hypnotherapy for success in business. And you can reach Ted Moreno at hmigrads.com. Well, we need to take a short break, but please stay tuned, because when we come back, we're going to meet more people and talk to other HMI grads and their clients on Hypnosis Today. But first, I want to thank Ted. I want to thank Rob so much for coming in and sharing your experience. Stay tuned. We have a lot more coming up for you right after break. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, you have some with him, his very special guest and client, Rob. Now, Rob came to see Ted to achieve more success in business. Please help me welcome my guests. <laughs> now, Rob, I want to start. And how hypnosis is being used today to help people achieve success, happiness, and prosperity. It is my pleasure to introduce my very special guests. Well, my first one is Ted Moreno. Now, Ted is an honors graduate of HMI College of Hypnotherapy, and he is also an author. And I want to make sure I get this right. His book is one of my favorite books. He wrote, The Ultimate Guide to Letting Go of Negativity and Fear and Loving Life. And Ted, has <laughs> welcome to Hypnosis Today, the nation's first web TV talk show that explores the fascinating world of hypnotherapy. My name is Lisa Mackenberg, and I'll be your host, covering a wide variety of subjects to help you understand the power of the subconscious mind.